A very difficult concept to understand in physics is centripetal acceleration because it's very hard to visualize when you're looking at an object that's moving in at a constant velocity around a circle with a constant radius. So let's look at our situation like we've always defined for centripetal acceleration in a little physics. The object is moving through an angle of theta and it moves at a constant speed of v. Remember the, the velocity always changes but the speed is the same. So if we were to look at this particle moving through an infinitely small distance from A to B, I know that picture is quite an exaggeration, but imagine it's moving an infinitely small arc length from A to B. It will have an infinitely small angle in which it has subtended, that is delta theta, about the circle. So let's look at it. When a particle moves from A to B, it moves through an infinitely small angle of delta theta. We're looking at small arc length. And since it is moving through an infinitely small angle, in circular motion it is moving through a time of delta t. Alright? Okay, now we understand that although the speed remains constant, its velocity changes. So we should differentiate between the two and that's very important for the algebra that is coming up later. So I'm going to call the velocity at position A VA and the velocity at position B VB. Okay, let's look. As a particle moves, it accelerates because it's, it's changing direction constantly. And we know that for sure that velocity as a vector the initial velocity plus the change in velocity will give you the final velocity. So our initial velocity is VA and our final velocity is VB. So the change in velocity is going to be delta V. So VA plus delta V gives you VB. And what's great about this is that you can visualize now the great thing about this is that we can visualize these three components as the addition result of two vectors where VA plus delta V gives you VB as a vector. And we know that acceleration for instantaneous acceleration is an instantaneous change in velocity over an incremental change in time. And from this triangle we can see that for a very, very small angle, delta theta, it is equal to delta v, the top vector, divided by v. So that is va, basically. And when we rearrange, we give d delta v is equal to v delta theta. And when we substitute delta v into the number 2 formula, we get acceleration is equal to v delta theta, all of it over delta t. So that's where we get to right now. The mathematics and the algebra is a bit, it's a bit dwindly, okay, but we'll get there. <laughs> so separately, we know that for a constant angular velocity omega, Delta theta is equal to omega multiplied by the delta t. And this is, I'm talking about very, very small angles. In fact, in circular motion, since it's moving in a constant velocity and it's, and it's following a constant angular velocity, theta is always going to be equal to omega multiplied by t. So that is a very, very important step in our derivation of centripetal acceleration. So let's continue. For number six, the very important step is to replace delta theta from the omega equation into the acceleration equation. So what happens is you will cancel out the delta t's and you will cancel out the delta thetas and you would get acceleration is equal to v multiplied by omega. Acceleration is equal to linear speed multiplied by angular speed. Very important concept also. And we can also further um, 
derive another equation that is more commonly used in physics. That is, acceleration is equal to linear velocity squared divided by the radius. Okay, and then that's in constant velocity circular motion. And we can derive a further important formula that links very much with simple harmonic motion, because in a way, circular motion is simple harmonic motion, arguably. But that is, those are the three very important formulas for centripetal acceleration that we have derived from this vector triangle. So here's another look at those three very important formulas. And in the next video, we're going to be looking at centripetal force which is basically mass multiplied by these equations, but it is still very important to look at. Thank you very much.